The Central Asian Report is a program about the ongoing geopolitical trends and the panorama of the present-day realities in Central Asia. Politics, economics and culture, events, trends and people, all this on one territory. Hello, you're watching the Central Asian Report in today's program. The problems of water use in Central Asia. A home to everyone. Kazakhstan celebrates the Day of Unity. Festival of Sand Sculptures, an art that slips through one's fingers. And coming right up, headlines from Central Asia. The international agreement on the creation of a transport corridor that will connect the countries of Central Asia with the ports of the Persian Gulf has come into effect. It will pass through Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Oman and Iran. It is expected that the new transit route will increase the speed of cargo transport, optimize transportation costs and also allow to simplify and standardize official documents and procedures of exchange of products between countries. As a side note, in February of this year Kazakhstan will also join the agreement. Prospective members also include Russia and China. An Iranian company for the experts of hydro energy equipment and services will build three power stations in Kazakhstan, one wind powered and two thermal powered. The company will partner up with the Kazakhstan Enterprise. Corresponding agreements have already been signed. A 50 megawatt capacity wind power station will be located on Kazakhstan's shore of the Caspian Sea. Two thermal stations will be built along the route of the Silk Way near the city of Almaty. They will generate 250 megawatt of electric energy. The plan is to realize the projects within a period of 18 months. By 2025, Turkmenistan is planning to become a tobacco-free country. According to the data of the World Health Organization, today Turkmenistan is holding a leading position in terms of combating tobacco dependence. At the moment, just a little over 8% of the country's population are smokers. And this is the lowest level not just in Central Asia, but the entire European region. To remind, early in order to combat smoking, the country's authorities introduced a state monopoly on the sale of tobacco products. Kyrgyzstan's Lake Isakul leads the rating of the most popular resorts in the CIS among Russian tourists. This is according to the online tourism service provider Travel.ru, based on the data on hotel and apartment bookings for the summer of 2016. Among the top five destinations in this rating, there is Kazakhstan's Burabay Resort, Belarusian Lake Naroch, the Baku coast of the Caspian Sea, and the Armenian Lake Sivan. An 80% shortage in water. This is the extent of the deficit in the most important resource which can be reached in the dry years in the countries of Central Asia. Access to water is still one of the most acute problems in the region. Our next story is on the difficulties that have already been overcome and problems that still need to be tackled. Water use, a problem which has caused many disputes in Central Asia. Countries which are located in the lower reaches of rivers depend on water which comes from the territories of Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. In addition, the water is used for various purposes in the country, in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan for the generation of energy, and their neighbors primarily for irrigation. <laughs> The territory which encompasses four regions, Kazlorda, South Kazakhstan, Jambul and Almaty, has a population of 7 million people and has around 1.2 million hectares of irrigated lands. Sirdarya is one of the largest rivers in the region. Over a span of many years, its use has wedged the divide between the neighboring countries. Because of the increase in water consumption for air electricity generation in the winter time, Kyrgyzstan used to release two and a half times more water into the river. In the meantime, Uzbekistan built a dike on its section of the river. It prevents the outflow of water into the Arlasai depression. But the stream course of the Sirdarya River could not handle such flows. Tens of populated towns of Kazakhstan's territory face the threat of floods, and this concerns tens of thousands of people, their homes and livestock. During the spring and fall high water period in the South Kazakhstan region, 
22 populated towns constantly faced flooding. In the Kızılırdağ region, 24 populated towns. After 2000 until 2010, damages have reached billions. What is actually happening is that because of the neighbors, Kazakhstan will be forced to tackle the threat of flooding in the winter and water shortage in the summer. The Koksaray Compensation Reservoir solved this problem. Its construction commenced in 2008 on the territory of the South Kazakhstan region. And in 2010, the water reservoir was filled with its first billion cubic meters out of the Sirdarya River. The stream bed of the Serdarya in Kızlorda can handle no more than 500 cubic meters per second. The remaining water is redirected to the water reservoir. After the launch of the counter-regulator, we no longer had any unforeseen situations. The compensation reservoir can be filled with up to 3 billion cubic meters of water. During the sowing season, the water is redirected back to the Serdarya River. The temporarily empty bottom of the reservoir, which has an area of more than 450 square kilometers, becomes a fertile pasture land for cattle grazing. Earlier, these were salinated lands. At the moment, the salt is cleared out, and after the draining of water, which happens at the end of May, beginning of June, various types of plants grow here. The Koksaray Reservoir solved some of the problems with the distribution of water, but times bring along new challenges, which the countries of Central Asia will sooner or later have to face. In comparison with the previous years, when in the 50s, the population of the Central Asian region increased sevenfold. The process is ongoing. That is why this requires more and more new products. It is clear that the rise in production volumes will require more water, but the reserves of this resource are limited in the region, and that means that new approaches need to be found for its management. For example, more cost-efficient irrigation technologies, stem and drip irrigation, and in Kazakhstan, a sectoral program was already adopted for its introduction. It will not be required to sow 300 hectares in order to get one ton. It will be sufficient to sow 70 hectares. That means that a set amount of water will be needed for these 70 hectares. And the remaining water that would have been required for 300 hectares can be used for new products. All the countries of Central Asia are seriously engaged in resolving the issue of effective water use. In separate regions, pilot projects of water conservation are being launched, not only in the agricultural sector, but also in industrial production. And this means that there is hope that in the near future, there will be less problems connected with water use in Kazakhstan. A home to everyone. The 1st of May is celebrated as a day of unity of peoples in Kazakhstan. Polyethnicity is one of the main features of a country, which due to historical events became a home to people of 120 ethnic backgrounds. How to preserve a sense of community without losing one's own identity in a multinational country? A correspondent from Almaty brings us the report. stage is the youngest actress of the Korean theater of musical comedy, Evgenia Yoon. She's only 19, but has been part of the theater troupe since birth. Three generations of her family were part of this theater as well. Her grandfather was a composer and wrote music, her grandmother was a prima donna of the stage, and her mother a director. It is probably somewhat difficult for the audience because they do not speak the language and all our plays are in Korean. But there are already permanent spectators who come to our theater regularly specifically because they want to see Korean plays. There are more than 100,000 Koreans living in Kazakhstan, but art is above nationality. That is why the Korean theater is open for representatives of all ethnic backgrounds. Today there is a street performance. It was put together using authentic practices of Korean art, some Nori drums, national and contemporary dances, Korean songs, as well as the staging of a traditional Korean wedding ceremony.
This is also a wedding ceremony. In the town Bolar Batur, which is located in the Kordai district of the Jambal region, not a single wedding is held without it. The population, just as in the entire region, is unofficially called Tungan. The Dungan diaspora of 70,000 people lives primarily in the south of Kazakhstan and strictly follows the traditions of their ancestors who were settled here from China. Wedding rituals here have not been changed. The festive dish Wu Tse must be prepared. The bride puts on a traditional costume and the groom prepares the house to which he invites his young wife. However, the rites are not observed only during festivities. For example, the Greek tradition of a common meal is practically a sacred ritual that can gather together an entire big family. That is why even on regular days, the Greeks gather together behind one table. The Greek diaspora in Kazakhstan is estimated at around 10,000 people. 2,000 people live in the Almaty region. Their ancestors ended up here in the 40s as a result of deportations. It was not easy to get settled in a new land. Local residents and hard work helped out. They worked on tobacco fields as entire families, including small children. However, today, members of the Greek diaspora cultivate vegetables, fruits and, of course, grapes. I make wine from locally grown grapes, make this tsupuro, and when you come back home, especially in the summer, the days are long. The first thing I do is get changed, go to the garden, which has a vineyard, and this is where I relax and take a break from everything. Behind the table, Dmitry Stefaniri is tasting homemade wine and discussing what is the most important for a peaceful life in a multinational country, friendship and unity. It is precisely these principles which are capable of unifying people of diverse ethnic backgrounds into a powerful nation that is ready to build and develop. Not with marble alone. The very first festival of sand sculptures in Central Asia opened its doors in Almaty. During the two weeks of its functioning, artists from various countries of the world tediously worked on their art. Our correspondent visited the open-air exhibition and is now ready to share with us the curious details. Mounds of sand, hot sun, mighty figures of people and animals. This is not a mirage. This is a festival of sand sculptures, which was recently launched in Almaty. We wanted to launch the festival in a big city, and Almaty is one of the biggest cities, plus the weather. It is sunnier than other cities. A team of organizers from Russia and Ukraine worked on the creation of this exhibition. They've already worked in France, Germany, Belgium, United States and Japan. This is their first time in Central Asia. In the southern metropolis of Kazakhstan, sculptors presented 14 compositions made of sand with heights from 3 to 7 meters. The setup took only two and a half weeks. Around 1,600 tons of sand were used for the festival, perhaps even more. This is around 110 trucks of sand. These sculptors, despite the conventional opinion, do not fear any stormy weather. Even after shower rains, the sculptures require only minor restoration work. The secret is in the very tight compaction of sand and its treatment with a special component that contains glue. After the departure of the sculptors, local masters will watch over the compositions. Some local young people were allocated. We worked with them for a day, I showed them everything, and we restored some parts here together. It worked out pretty well and fast. It's good that they helped. On the opening day of the exhibition, around 3,000 people attended. If the weather doesn't disappoint, then the sand sculptures may withstand here for a month and a half. Then they are dismantled, and the sand is taken back to the quarry so there is not that much time during which it is possible to enjoy the sculptures of favorite movie heroes. I am building a house, and I thought that sand is used only in construction, and it turns out that such beauty can be made out of sand as well. This is great. 
Вообще супер. It is possible that soon residents of Astana will also have an opportunity to enjoy the sand sculptures. The organizers are planning to make a similar festival there for the day of the capital. And in the winter, this team is planning to make sculptures out of ice. You are watching the Central Asian Report. Until next time on Kazakh TV.